Thanks, Holly. Um, and a lot of us, we, we used to work together with Ryan in the past, and it's really exciting to have him here so we could work together again. Um, so this talk's going to be very exciting. Delta Lake. Um, first of all, I can announce the general availability of Delta Lake uniform. What is, what is uniform? Um, really, it's just short for two words, universal format. It's our approach to allow full lake house format interoperability. See, with all of these different formats, Delta, Iceberg, Hootie, it's essentially a collection of data files in Parquet and a little bit of metadata on the side. All of the formats use the same MVCC transactional techniques to keep that together. And so we thought to ourselves, in this age of LLMs transforming language left and right, couldn't we just find a way to translate that metadata into different formats so that you just need to have one copy? And that's exactly what we're doing with Uniform. The Uniform GA allows you to essentially write data as Delta and be able to read it as Iceberg, Hootie. Um, and we've worked very closely with the Apache X table and Hootie team to make that possible. And we're going to be working with the Iceberg team to make that even better. The great thing about Uniform is there's barely a noticeable performance overhead. It's super fast. You get awesome features like liquid clustering. Uh, there's support for all of the different data types from map, lists, arrays. And best of all, it's got a production-ready catalog. With UC and Uniform, it's one of the only live implementations of the, UC, of the Iceberg REST catalog API. And that's available for everybody using Uniform. There have been over four exabytes of data that have already been loaded through Uniform. We have hundreds of customers using it. And one of them, in particular, mScience, as you can see here, was very happy that they were able to have one copy of their data, which allowed them to reduce costs and have better time to value. And it's innovations like Uniform that are really making Delta Lake the most adopted open lake house format. There have been over nine exabytes of data processed on Delta yesterday over a billion clusters per year using it. And this is tremendous growth. It's 2x more than last year. And if you're like me, and when you saw these numbers, I, I did not believe 9 exabytes. I literally, up till yesterday, we were going back, looking at the code, making sure they calculated it correctly, because it's just a tremendous amount of data every day that's going into Delta. Um, and it's adopted by a large percentage of the Fortune 500, 10,000 plus companies in production, lots of new features. But most interestingly, it's sort of that last number. There are over 500 contributors. And best of all, according to the Linux Foundation, and this is their project analytics site, it's open, anyone can go to it today, over about 66% of contributions to Delta come from companies outside of Databricks. And it's this community that just really makes us super excited and enables a ton of these features that are now available. Right? And these are time-tested. Awesome, innovative functionality, things like change data feed, log compaction. I, I love the row IDs feature that just came out. Um, but there are things like deletion vectors, right? Deletion vectors are a way that allow you to do fast updates and DML to your data. In many cases, it's 10 times faster than merge used to be. So if you have uh, DBT workloads or you're doing lots of operational changes to data, deletion vectors make your life easier. And there have been over 100 trillion row rewrites that have been saved because of these deletion vector features. And it's enabled by default for all Databricks users. And so it's through these features that we've also been able to unlock access to this amazing ecosystem of tools that support Delta. And with Uniform, that's now GA, we're able to get the same access to the Hootie and Iceberg ecosystem. So if you have tools and func um, SDKs, applications that work in there, they're all part of the Delta family now, thanks to Uniform. And there's been some great improvements to a lot of the connectors, the Trino, Rust connector, lots of awesome innovation happening here. And a lot of that is thanks to this new thing that we've developed called Delta Kernel. Essentially, at the core of all of this, there's a small library that you can just plug and play into your applications or SDKs that contains all the logic for the Delta formats, uh, all the version changes, new features, and it's making it so much easier for people 
to integrate and adopt Delta, and most importantly, stay up to date with the latest features. And we've been seeing this. The Delta Rust connector is community supported and has amazing traction. Uh, just a few weeks ago at Google's I.O. conference, I believe they, BigQuery introduced complete support for Delta. And very recently, uh, DuckDB added full support for Delta. And the best part of this is we have Hannes here, who's the co-founder, um, one of the co-creators of DuckDB, CEO of DuckDB Labs, professor of computer science, who's going to talk to us a little bit about how they integrated Delta into DuckDB. Hannes, get over here. Hey, thank you so much. Um, yes, hello and a uh, very good morning. Uh, it's wonderful to see all of you here. Uh, I have to adjust my eyes a bit to the amount of people. Um, as uh, Shant has said, I'm one of the people behind DuckDB. So for those of you who do not know what is DuckDB, it's a small in-process analytical data management system, speaks SQL, uh, has zero dependencies, and it's, um, yeah, uh, I'm having a lot of fun working on it with a growing team. Um, and last year, I talked about DuckDB on this very stage for the first time, and it was very exciting. But also, lots of things have happened since then in DuckDB land. Um, there's been an incredible growth in adoption um, for DuckDB. We're seeing all sorts of crazy things. And here, as an example, um, it's just the stars on GitHub have doubled within a year to almost 20,000. And in fact, we are so close to 20,000, so if you want to like it today, then you know, maybe we'll beat it. Uh, <laughs> But what also happened, and just last week, we actually released DuckDB 1.0, and that was a big moment for us. Uh, it was the culmination of six years of R&D in data management systems. And what does, what does 1.0 mean? Um, it means that we have now a stable SQL dialect and uh, various APIs. And most importantly, our storage format for DuckDB is going to be backwards compatible from now on out. Um, but Maybe taking a little bit of a step back, how does DuckDB fit in the general ecosystem? Um, if we look at the world's most widely used data tools, Excel, um, and we look at a very capable system like Spark, you, there's still a pretty big gap. There's a lot of data sets that are not going to work in Excel, but they are maybe a bit too small to actually throw Spark at them. So DuckDB is really perfect for this last mile, last mile of data analysis, where you may not need a whole data center to compute something. Um, so for example, you have already gone through your log files in Spark, and now it's time to do like some last mile analysis with DuckDB, doing some plots, what have you. That's where DuckDB fits into this big picture. But now we have to somehow get the data between Spark, uh, from Spark to DuckDB. So how are we going to do that? Obviously, we're going to use the best tool for the job available, right? CSV files. Maybe not. Um, so typically, people use Parquet files for this. Uh, obviously, both Spark and DuckDB can read and write Parquet files, so that works really well. But we've all heard about the issues that have appeared with updates and schema evolution, these kind of things, which is why we have Lakehouse formats. So today, we are announcing uh, official DuckDB support for Delta Lake. Um, it's going to be available completely out of the box with zero configuration or anything like that. Um, but this, we have done a bunch of these integrations. And one thing that's really special about the Delta Lake integration is that we use this uh, Delta kernel that Databricks is building with the community. And that's really ex exciting because it means that we don't have to build this from scratch like we used to, for example, with the Parquet uh, reader. But we can actually delegate a lot of the hard work of reading Delta files to the Delta kernel while at the same time um, keeping our you know, operators within the engine and so on and so forth. So it's really exciting. Um, we also made an extension to, for DuckDB uh, that can talk to the Unity catalog. So with this extension, we can uh, find the Delta Lake tables in the catalog and then actually uh, interact with them from DuckDB itself. So here we can see a, a script that actually works if you install DuckDB now. Um, you can install this Unity catalog uh, extension. You can create your secret, which is like credentials, and then you can basically just read these tables as if they were local tables. Um, if you want to hear more about this, there's actually going to be a talk this afternoon at uh, 1.40. Uh, just look for DuckDB in the title. Um, so the Delta extension joins this growing list of DuckDB extensions. Um, for example, there's others for 
iceberg, vector search, spatial, and this sort of thing. But as an open source project and a small team, we're really excited about Tabular um, and Databricks bringing Delta Lake and Iceberg closer together because for us it means we don't have to maintain two so different things for the same essentially problem. And we're really excited about that. It means less work for us, and I think everyone wins. I just want to plug one sort of small thing that we are actually launching today. Um, I've mentioned extensions to DuckDB. We've seen a lot of uptake in DuckDB extensions. Um, and from now on, actually, we are launching community extensions, which means that everyone can make DuckDB extensions and basically publish them and then installing them as, is as easy as just typing install into a DuckDB near you. So that's all for today. Um, thank you very much, and I will give back to Sean. That integration is super awesome. It's very exciting. OK. So how do we top that? Oop. By not going back, by going forward. And forward to Delta 4.0. So we just we have the branch cut. It's available. Delta 4.0 is the biggest change in Delta since history. It's jam-packed with new features and functionality. Um, things like coordinated commits, collations, all sorts of new functionality that make it easier to work with various different types of data sets. Uh, we won't have time to go through all of this, so I'm going to pick a couple and dive into why these are such amazing features. So liquid clustering is generally available now as part of Delta 4.0. And with liquid clustering, we really wanted to set out to solve this challenge that so many people have brought up. Partitioning, it's good for performance, but it's so complicated. You get over-partitioning, small files, you pick the wrong thing. It's a pain to resolve. And Liquid solves this with a novel data layout strategy that's so easy to use that we hope all of you will say goodbye to partitions by. You never need to say that again when you define a table. Not only is it easy to use, we found out it's up to seven times faster for writes and 12x faster for reads. So the performance benefits are amazing. And of course, it's easy to evolve the schema, make changes, define anything without having to worry about all your data being rewritten in transforms. And you know, there are about 1,500 people, customers, actively using this. The adoption has been insane. Uh, over 1.2 zettabytes of data have been skipped. And you don't have to take my word for it. Even Shell, when they started using it for their time series workloads, saw over an order of magnitude improvement in performance. And it was just so easy to use. Next, open variant data type. And this one's really important. That first word, open, is really exciting. So what happens is now in this world of AI, you have more and more semi-structured text data, um, alternative data sources, all of this coming into the lake house. And we wanted to come up with a way to make it easier for people to store and work with these types of data in Delta. Um, and usually what happens is when you're stuck with semi-structured data, most of the data engineers, they sort of have to make a compromise. And you know, none of us like to make compromises. But usually it's about being open, flexible, or fast. And often, they'd only be able to pick two out of these three. So for example, for semi-structured data, one approach is just store everything as a string, right? That's open. It gives you tons of flexibility. But parsing strings is slow, right? Why would you store a number as a string and have to reread it every time? So of course, there's an option to pick the fields out of your semi-structured data, make them concrete types, and you get amazing performance, right? This is open, very fast to access. However, if you have sparse data, you sort of lose out on a lot of that flexibility to modify the schema. And you know, relational databases for a while have had special enum or variant data types, but all of those had always been proprietary. If you wanted to use them to get a balance of not having to store everything as a string and not having to shard out every single column, you got locked in. And so that's why we're very excited with variant to be able to kind of get that sweet spot in the middle. You can have your JSON data, store it with flexibility, fully open, with amazing performance, right? It's very easy to use. It works with even you know, complex JSON. Here's an example of the syntax. And we found, of course, it's eight times faster than storing your JSON data as raw strings. 
This is just tremendous. So if you're storing JSON in a string field today, um, go back to work or home and start using variants. It's available in uh, DVR 15.3. But most importantly, all of the code for variant is already checked in to Apache Spark. There's a common subdirectory in the 4.0 branch right now that has all of the implementation details for variant and all of the operators. And there is a binary format code definition and library that we've made available open source so all the other data engines can also use variants. We really want this to be an official open format that everyone adopts so that finally we have a non-proprietary way of storing semi-structured data reliably. And so with that, yeah, oh, it's a big deal. With that, I just want to summarize Delta Lake 4.0. It's interoperable. We have this amazing ecosystem with people like Hannes working together, making it better and stronger. You get amazing performance benefits. And all of this is just so much easier to use now than it ever was before. Thank you. Mm -hmm.